Hello everyone, this is going to be a demonstration of DriveWire 4. Uh, it's going to be running on my Windows 7 laptop and it's going to be serving files to the a Tandy Color Computer 3 that I've uh, had for a while now. Uh, said in my blog that I was going to do a uh, demonstration of how this works, so I figured uh, no better time than now, right? So, anyway, the uh, there's two connections that are necessary for this to work. Uh, there's an audio connection and a data connection. Um, the audio connection, if you look on the back here of the uh, color computer, a little light there, you can see that this cord right here is plugged into the cassette port, and that cassette port uh, comes out of there, has two wires going to it. One is the mic, would be a mic wire, and one is a earphone wire. Uh, they're going to back to the computer over here, and to these connections, and you can see the uh, one with the tape is the headphone wire, or is actually the headphone in the headphone port on the laptop, the microphone out of the cassette. And then the other one, obviously, is the microphone for the computer, which would be the uh, headset for the computer cord. So basically, you're going to reverse them uh, from each other to verify, to make sure you have the uh, sound going in and into the correct port. Uh, the port that uh, the, the sound into the computer from the coil computer is not as necessary. Uh, I kind of made the cord up and when I did it had the extra pieces of uh, wire when I bought it and, and the extra ends so I just made it up. Um, there is actually another third wire um, if you want to hook it up to the actual cassette player that you, um, is useful as a, a trigger. So uh, anyways enough about that. So that's the audio wire. The other wire that's necessary is the data wire. The data wire is going to come in to the back of the, the Tandy color computer right here into the serial port goes through this gray wire, comes up, back up around the desk to this. This is a DB9 end. I basically took a DB9 uh, cord that I bought, cut it off, uh, and spliced in the DB9 that went into the back of the Tandy. That goes to a DB9 serial uh, connector, donger, uh, dongle, converter, whatever you want to call it, that... Uh, converts from the serial signal over here to the USB serial signal and uh, of course computer magic inside the computer makes that work um, so that's the second connection so the way this works is first what we have to do is we'll come over here we will click on the color computer get our startup screen got our typical extended color basic 2.0 screen on there we're going to type exec colon I'm sorry that's not correct C L O A D M colon E X E C. That's C L O A D M colon E X E C. Press enter. That's going to give us this S up here in the corner. That's telling us that the color computer is uh, looking on or listening on its uh, cassette port for a sound file that it can process. So we're going to come over here to the laptop and we're going to come over here to this file. It's called HDBCC3. We're going to open that file. And if we watch up here on the screen, we'll see it went to F, means it found it. It's going to start to blink. And it's blinking, and that's uh, telling us that it's found the file. It tells us the name is HDB DOS Charlie 3. And that's the file we want. So uh, it's going to continue to load. Um, and when it's done, it will reboot into a different ROM. And uh, we will know that by the the uh, identification page that comes up. So this is about uh, about 40 seconds, I think, for this to load. So after that loads, this is what we'll be left with. Uh, Disk Extended Color Basic 1.1. 1 .1. uh, and if you see down here in this line, it tells us HDB DOS 1.2 DW3 Coco 3. It's basically telling us that this is the uh, packed... I don't know if hack's the right word, but the uh, modified disk extended color base of 1.1 ROM for HDB DOS so that this process will work. So, now that we have that booted up, uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to get DriveWire 4 running on the computer. So I'll come over here, 
this is my drive wire for shortcut we'll click on that and that will open up our drive wire for interface now I already have this configured um, the configuration is not hard uh, there's a wizard that runs you through how everything works so uh, I don't think there'll be any issues with that um, it's fairly self-explanatory um, the only hard part I figure I found out is down here when you're adding um, you want to add a place to look for files so if you go to local and then it will ask you link local item so you say okay well then give a name to it well the name is I would give make a folder so um, probably make a folder on your desktop maybe call it you know color computer images or disk images something like that and uh, you know give it that name uh, you'll add that then you'll come down here you know you can search you can uh, search for your path get the path to that item that hit add item um, on mine if you uh, look here if I can get down here to show you I have drive wire 4 as a item that I have added to use right there so um, that's where this file if you come up on top of here test disk dot dsk if I open up drive wire down here you'll see there it is test disk dsk now if I click on that it's gonna bring it up here you come over here now this was a little confusing when I first got to it you can see what it's trying to do is tell you what's in it so you can see it, I brought that up it tells me where it is tells me to file uh, path for it, what type of disk it is and that there's basically nothing on it it's completely empty uh, 63 sectors so um, it gives you the good information there I'm sorry uh, 80 68 total granules my fault so uh, what you gotta do is you hit insert disk when you hit insert disk it will ask you for what disk number I picked zero and then it popped it up here in test disk dsk now if you go up here to this icon next to the drive zero once you have a disk loaded and double click on it you'll get this interface which is a re representation of the uh, old school style uh, floppy drives so you can see that it already shows that I have test disk loaded I always like to reload the image and uh, if it gives me the option sync it but it didn't so we're good there and uh, basically we're ready to go so what we do now is we'll go back over to the color computer right here sorry about that and uh, I'm gonna type directory and I got an IO error let's try a drive zero directory and I got an I.O. error. Hmm. That's interesting. Alright, let's try uh, closing that out and closing that out. And we'll reopen. And try this again. See, now I sync two buttons available. That's kind of what I was expecting before, so. Let's try this again, see if we get anything different on the uh, color computer screen. We did not. Huh. Okay, well, the only other thing I think of is I did move my USB port from one port to another, so let me try moving that back. Maybe uh, it was not happy with that move. See if that helps any. Ah, that is, appears to be what it was. It did not like the change in... Oh, I know why, because when I set up the program, I told it COM port 3, so when I moved the USB, it was a different COM port, and it couldn't find it, so that was the issue. Okay, so, moved it back to the port we were in. So there's an important tidbit, I guess, that I just learned, that hopefully you can uh, learn from, is uh, if you change the COM port, i.e. the USB spot, you need to change it within DriveWire 4 also, or it will not find it. So anyways, there we have the directory, uh, Drive 0, free uh, 68 granules and uh, what we'll do here is we'll type in a small very small program we need a line number call it 
testing drive wire. We'll run that just to verify it runs, and it does. We will save it to disk called DW. It's saved. We'll do a directory to verify it shows it, and it does. And then what we'll do is we will go to uh, new to get rid of the program in memory. We'll try to run it again to show it's not there. It didn't run, so it's not in memory anymore. We'll load it back up off a of disk. It says OK, and we'll type run. Testing DW. So it works. So um, the only other feature I guess we show is uh, just to show that it does work is uh, if we go into directory, you'll see that the file is still showing on a disk. We can go in and we can kill it. Yes, kill it. I always love that command. Kill DW. Huh, it would not it won't let me do it. Let me see, I may have to give it the uh, entire file name. I haven't played with this command in a while, so it might be what it is. Yes, that is what it is. So hit directory again, and as you can see now we got our our other <laughs> Uh, 67 to 68 back and showing no items in the directory. So that is DriveWire 4 running on a Windows 4 laptop on a Color Computer 3. Uh, the only other few things I would mention is when you do the... Um, I guess I can show you that's interesting. If you notice when we did the last directory command there was nothing there, right? Well, if I come in here to my disk interface, I'm trying to get this a little better for you guys, there we go, and I go up here and I click on reload image here, interestingly enough, if I'm not mistaken, when I come back over here, we're going to hit directory, oh no, it wasn't there when we started, so okay, so anyway, but uh, my point was, is that um, when you update something on the disk, until you uh, reload the image or export that image, which is uh, this button over here, then uh, it's not committed. So uh, that was kind of strange to me. I figured, you know, you're kind of used to when I hit save, it's on the disk. Well, if you save and then close out uh, DW4, DriveWire 4, um, I believe there's a potential that you could close out the disk without it being, your changes being saved. I'm going to verify that. I'll update that in the blog if I'm wrong or uh, if I confirm that. But my initial testing, uh, what I've seen before, kind of showed that that's what would, would happen. So I thought that was kind of, uh, I guess, not a a benefit or not a, a feature that I kind of liked. I'd rather it would save when I hit save. It saves and it's you know updated to the actual disk image. Um, but other than that, uh, the program works well. You can see that it, uh, you know turned it on, no issues. Uh, the setup, there is a setup wizard uh, when you first install DriveWire that uh, sets up for you. That's where you pick the COM port that you want to use. So, like I was saying, if you change COM ports, you're going to have to change uh, the COM port in DriveWire 4 also, or it's not going to work as we saw, and you'll get errors. So, um, I guess the only other thing I need to show you, uh, let's go here and get rid of these guys. See that it's shutting down, saving configuration, boom, and away it goes. If we come down here to Mozilla, or Firefox, this page here, if you type DriveWire 3 into Google and look for the first one that comes up, it's going to be called www.frontiernet.net and uh, with you know, some other stuff after it. Uh, but that link is going to get you this Cloud9 page. This is uh, Cloud9 is a company that does a bunch of uh, aftermarket stuff for Cocos. Um, one of the big things that they're in uh, that has really been useful for a lot of the Coco people uh, is the DriveWire 3 and 4 um, software. So you can see this page is dedicated to DriveWire 3 and 4, uh, mostly 3 actually, but uh, uh, there's a lot of information here about how to use it, uh, how it works. Um, the information is very good. I uh, recommend you read through it. Um, but uh, the important, really, really important stuff down near the bottom here shows you, if you read uh, the bottom, you'll see free downloads. 
Uh, first one's a DriveWire 4 project. Second one's DriveWire HB DOS and DW3 DOS ROM images, cassette files, and track files. That file, even though it says uh, you know DriveWire 3 in the thing, uh, you still need that for the server to work. Um, that is the ROM image that we loaded through the audio port, through the cassette port. Uh, the next one, Nitro OS 9, DriveWire images for Cocoa 1, 2, and 3. That's if you want to um, boot into Nitro OS 9 which uh, I hope to play with a little bit and uh, maybe I'll do a little video on that eventually. Uh, there's also a DriveWire 3 Mac server and a DriveWire 3 Win server. Um, I played with both of those. Neither of those, uh, to be honest with you, um, really were great. Uh, they both worked at times. They seemed to be very glitchy. Um, didn't seem to recognize uh, the serial port real well on either computer or on either platform. Um, DriveWire 4 has worked well on Windows, although I have not gotten it to work yet on the Mac. Uh, no more uh, port recognition issues over there. So, um, that's that. So, basically what you need out of here is you need your, your third one here, which is, I'm sorry, your second one, which is the cassette files. And then you'll also click on this one, and it's going to send you to the DriveWire 4 site. And basically, if you see in the very top here, it tells you as of 6.2012, version 4.10 is now available for download. So if you want to download that, you would click on that. When you get that download, that's the download for everybody. It's for Linux, for Mac, for Windows. Uh, all the stuff they have is in there. Um, so you'll get that there. So that's your DriveWire 4 uh, software with the DriveWire 3 cassette files from uh, Cloud9. And that is that as they say um i hope you enjoyed it i hope it was informative maybe help somebody out get to where they're going i am going to uh either make a blog and or video on the cables themselves how they get put together where i found the information on putting them together so that uh we can uh put them uh you know if you want to make your own cable you'll be able to do that and uh, uh you can look for that soon uh Thank you, and any comments, suggestions, or questions, please uh, leave them as comments after the blog, after this video. Thanks.